I'm here in the parking lot of Cañada de la Virgen, an ancient archaeological site. I'll be giving you a tour of today. This site uh, cannot be accessed by car. You have to come here and park, and then it has to go through. You have to go through a large area of privately owned land uh, on a bus, and you have to go with a tour guide to see the site. Here we have Complex A, the House of the Wind, the Temescal, Complex B, and over here somewhere should be the unexcavated Complex C. This is facing west, and this would be the east where the sun rises and the ceremonial road would be about one kilometer long going like this. Uh, that being the north, that being the south. Uh, this would be a reflecting pool in the what is called the House of the Thirteen Skies. There were 13 people entombed in these rooms, many showing uh, cranial deformation. And uh, up here there was a red temple which had red and black stripes. Um, it is asymmetrical that's only found in the Yucatan and here and uh, there was in one corner uh, they dynamited part of it in the 1940s not sure why maybe just the Schliemann school of archaeology at work this is the house of the wind and it's notable that it was built originally as a square and then had round features added on top later which is quite rare in Mesoamerica, only appearing here and in a few other places in the region. This is called the House of the Longest Night, and it looks like there would have been also a uh, ceremonial reflecting pool. Uh, there is a pyramidal structure in the back, which uh, I think is uh, higher on the southern side, and there would have been a temazcal there, a sauna. Here you can see the orientation with the north being there. It's not exactly uh, east-west, went close, and here you can see the part that was blown up by dynamite. Here you can see uh, what it looked like before excavation and after. And uh, here is the Temescal. The entrance is on the other side, the far side from here. Um, and uh, another ceremonial platform and courtyard. And they say that there's evidence of another road that continued in that direction. And that's the House of the Wind, which seems to have been used for sacrificial purposes. It is an astronomical observatory, and you can see here the moon. So maybe a better picture. The moon and the sun happening to fall uh, between the two lobes of the pyramidal structure on certain days of the year, so that the site could function like a calendar. Cañada de la Virgen, or the Canyon of the Virgin, and somewhere in there was discovered a stone that, when cracked open, uh, contained the image of the Virgin Mary, which is in a church nearby. Here is a one kilometer long ceremonial road that is the entrance to the site, and uh, not a lot of people lived at the site itself, so they would all come and walk like this on this road that was carved out for this purpose on uh, specific religious festival days. It's very richly colorful with all kinds of lichen.
even though it's a bit overgrown. You can see the original thousand year old wall that would have lined either side of this road leading up to the pyramid. People would have walked here from all the way from San Miguel and uh, the Rio Laja, which is a river near there, would have taken probably at least the entire day. And uh, depending on the weather, it could have been very a very grueling journey. Water here, and that was used uh, probably in the farming when this was still an occupied site, but uh, would have been a bit more developed and cleaned up. And here we're crossing from the private land into the government-owned pyramid land. So in this uh, pond, there, there's uh, all, most of the year, at least, there's water. Right now, even in the peak of the dry season, there's still water there that attracts animals, all kinds of birds and rabbits, snakes, things that people could eat. And that's one of the reasons that this was uh, chosen as a place to settle. This is a reconstruction of what uh, the roofs would have been like on the buildings that would have been here and the temple that would have been on top of the... This is a garden uh, with different sections that uh, contains all kinds of plants that would have been used for different purposes, ceremonial and construction and uh, food and a replica of the a sort of paint that they would use on the inside of the temple and uh, dyes that came from uh, plants that are around here. And the red and black and the sand colored would uh, represent the earth, the sky, and the land. And uh, water, I guess. Okay, this is called Sangregado, and it's a plant that's red inside. It was probably used for the paint, but it's also used as a shampoo and uh, for skin infections. You have ceramics that were found inside the site, but could not be reconstructed into complete pots or put into museums or anything. So they've just uh, left it here. This tree is called Colorin, and inside of these pods there, it has some sort of little red bean that would be consumed in a way similar to coffee as a stimulant for the people that lived here. Here are some uh, reeds on the lake that would have been used for making the roofs of the building. Uh, all kinds of different stones that would have been used, like this would have been used to so mocajete to grind up uh, seeds and foods and grain, corn. And here are some geodes and obsidian and white obsidian, maybe some flint, things that would have been used to make fire or knives or other tools. Uh, there's a lot of different types of nopal around here. All of them are edible, but they all have a slightly different taste and uh, are better at different times of the year. But they would have been farmed uh, together with chia seeds, uh, with corn, with uh, squashes, which are still grown in this area, and uh, various other edible plants to feed the people that lived here. Before people settled here, originally this entire landscape was forested, uh, probably with oak forest. And the, the oak trees would have helped to trap moisture here throughout the year. It would have been a totally different landscape, but of course people moved in and uh, burnt a lot of the wood, as they do. This is the House of the Wind. Normally when you have a round building like this, it's uh, dedicated to the god of the wind, which it could have been, but this one also seems to be dedicated to the polar north star. And uh, it's round, 22 meters wide at the bottom, and there's a little square part on the top, and it seems that there a ritual would have taken place while people would be dancing in a circle around, and you have a little staircase to access the top floor there on that side. And it's not confirmed, but uh, it's thought that perhaps on top where the square altar was that uh, sacrifices were done, perhaps even human sacrifices, since we know from other sites that there's uh, similar structures where uh, such things took place. But there's been no uh, bones or anything found to support that here in this case. There is evidence, however, that some sacrifices, at least some form of sacrifice, took place there because they found uh, lots of smashed pots and uh, old ceramics and there was this ritual of killing pottery, uh, sacrificing something that had been made to the gods, and in this case, uh, the wind god. There was also a burial found in one side of this uh, structure of a young woman who mm, seems to have had tuberculosis, but uh, the reason that she died uh, seems to have been from an attack by 
wild animals, probably coyotes. And that's what uh, she looked like when they found her. And here's the main structure, but this is the back of it. So you can see there's uh, something of a smaller pyramid there. And um, I think this is probably the best view that one has of the temple that's on top. And there, it looks like they reconstructed it a bit. Uh, there would have been red and black paint uh, symbolizing the sky and the earth. Uh, and over on this side, there would have been more, but it was blown up by dynamite in the 1940s, though I'm not sure why exactly. And here are the different uh, levels of the pyramid, and also you can see something of the uh, outer cladding in some places, which is was uh, originally made with much finer, nicer stones uh, that you can see have all kinds of rich different colors of red and orange and green. Uh, that would have been taken from uh, further away and used to decorate the outer surface of the pyramid. And as you can see, it's uh, quite large. It's a megalithic structure as it's uh, too large for human use. And uh, even the stairs and the various aspects of it are uh, inconveniently large for a person to use to give this uh, very monumental impression how important and grand this uh, building is. Now, if I remember correctly, somewhere over there should be uh, some furnaces uh, that display evidence of lime production, uh, people extracting limestone from the rocks and using it to make cement. You can see that all of these rocks are not just stacked in place, but they're held in place with cement that would have been made from the limestone here. Now this is a sunken patio called Complex B, and in this there would have been water. There's a aqueducts that come and uh, can fill this with water, and it would have been used uh, as a sky mirror for uh, observing uh, the sky at night. Uh, you could see all of the stars reflected here, and uh, they would also track uh, the sun and the moon and Venus. Um, this w would have been an important ritual site, and it seems that there was a second ceremonial road that led to this plaza. You can see the remains of columns here that go all around the edge of the site that would have uh, likely been holding up uh, some sort of roof here, and uh, would have been more of a building surrounding it. Over there we still have a ceremonial platform, and there in one corner is a temescal. The Temescal is sort of like a uh, ritual sauna uh, where people would uh, bathe and uh, prepare for certain ceremonies and uh, get into uh, an altered state of consciousness from uh, uh, being in the heat and uh, surrounded by the water. An example of sometimes when people would uh, use that uh, ritual Temescal bath would be when a woman uh, a girl had her first period, or when a woman was pregnant, or when a warrior was about to go into battle, and they needed to perform a ritual cleansing of their bodies and their minds and their souls, and they would do that in there. Now there somewhere is structure C, which is not yet excavated, and uh, they uh, left it like this, and this gives you sort of an idea of what uh, this entire area would have looked like before all of the uh, growth was cut down and all of the dirt was taken off the pyramid. Uh, it would have just looked like this sort of wood and a big mound of dirt. that you climb the steps of a pyramid, which is so that you keep your head down as a sign of respect for uh, the people that are there, and you walk in this sort of a zigzag. And on, for that reason, they made the steps very large, as you can see, compared to my shoe. I have to take quite a big step, and you have to look down to see where you're going. So that makes sure that you stay respectful. 
And this is the main square of the main pyramid, and there the sun sets on certain days of the year. Uh, the other the other complex back there was used to monitor the winter solstice, and I think this is for the equinoxes or the summer solstice. And here there would have been uh, 12 houses uh, and a 13th on top for the most important person. And uh, many people were also found buried here, um, including with their pets, uh, some of them with cranial deformation. And uh, here there would have been lots of rituals done, and there's a big echo uh, over there, so everyone could hear everything that was happening here. And there's one theory that this was uh, symbolic of the underworld, and another theory that it was a sky mirror filled with water for observing the sky. But all of the people who came here on pilgrimages would have gathered here for ceremonies that would have taken place on top of that main pyramid. So on the top here, uh, in one of the buildings is buried someone who is uh, known as the patriarch of this place. And that skeleton is much, much older than uh, all of the other skeletons that were found uh, in these other areas. And it seems that they were all very important people since they were all buried with all kinds of uh, very fancy objects. But that one is very special because it's from BC, from hundreds of years BC. And it's someone that was reburied taken here, and maybe this entire site was originally dedicated to that person. As you can see, there's all kinds of very uh, fancy stones, very colorful stones, very green one, very red one, orange, yellow, and these all would have been taken from far away. And uh, that's the most holy part of the entire complex, where all the most important rituals happened, where the most important people lived, and uh, the center of all the ceremonies here, it's where the sun would set on certain days of the year. And it was originally thought that uh, this place was inhabited by the Otomi, or the people who lived here later on, at the time when uh, the Spanish arrived and already started uh, conquering and settling this area. However, uh, they did genetic analysis of uh, the skeletons that were found buried here, and um, concluded that uh, it was a mix of various uh, various ancient peoples from around Mexico, from uh, regions of Teotihuacan and also uh, the Mayan and uh, some other groups that uh, I don't remember the name of. Here we have a cactus and a tree growing completely together, their trunks fusing. It's a quite unusual sight. And it is also, it was thought that this was uh, perhaps part of the Toltec expansion that took place around that time, but it doesn't seem to be the case. They don't seem to be related to the Toltecs or have uh, been uh, under their control. Although this place did uh, trade with, uh, with very far corners of Mesoamerica and Mexico, and uh, objects from all the way from the sea, seashells and uh, various other objects have been found here as trade goods, and it's thought that uh, some of the plants they grew here and medicines they made and other things were uh, exported and traded with people from very far away. Now you might be wondering why this place is called Cañada de la Virgen. That's because there's a giant canyon over there uh, named after the Virgin Mary because uh, that canyon is filled with geodes and they cracked one open and inside they saw, sort of like Jesus Christ on a piece of toast, uh, the image of the Virgin Mary. And that was uh, enough reason to build a church somewhere nearby, and that geode is still there. Uh, however, in ancient times, it seems that this site with the pyramid would have been called uh, Pantuco, uh, as far as we know, because it's written in a uh, Chichimeca Codex, although uh, it's difficult to read and uh, not it hasn't been entirely deciphered, so not really sure what it was called a thousand years ago. But uh, now it's called Cañada de la Virgen, one of the most interesting sites in Guanajuato, if you're into ancient history, one of the frontiers of Mesoamerica. Um, very rarely visited, but uh, very interesting. So if you're ever in Guanajuato or San Miguel de Allende, uh, I highly recommend you go out and have a look.